Hello, I'm Brian Kafke and welcome back to my channel. I'm a data and AI solutions enabler and I've got a lot of videos on here so please subscribe, like and share with your friends. Now a lot of stuff I focus on is typically Azure and everything is data and AI generally one way or another it, it focuses on that. So what I want to do today is create the first of what will be a series of videos. This one is to have something that needs to be secured so I can show you how to use Azure Key Vaults. And I'm going to show you also in another video how to use Databricks Secrets to access uh, Azure Key Vault to get credentials so you can connect to a database like Azure SQL Database. But the concepts also apply to accessing blob storage or um, even Azure Data Lake storage or a bunch, bunch of other things. So the idea is you want to store credentials. And that's where I'm going to go. But what I'm going to start with is just creating in Azure SQL database and that's going to I'm going to try and keep it short and simple because I like to go sometimes a little too detailed but I'm going to start simple now I could go to this main home page and click on create a resource or I can go over here on the left where the menu in is and I am in the Azure portal and here I'm going to say create a resource right away it says Azure SQL so I'll pick that I guess I was typing that in but you can just type it Azure SQL and here I need to say I'm going to create Azure SQL and you can read about things now I'm creating an Azure SQL database, which is a single database, but you could also, there's other options like managed instance and all kinds of things, but I'm gonna go here, single database, I'm gonna say create. And in here I need to, I have to identify my subscription. It's remembering a resource group I used earlier, but I'm gonna create a new resource group. This resource group, I like to say RG underscore, and then I use the resource group, excuse me, the resource name I'm gonna give it, as the rest of my resource group. If you're not familiar, a resource group is like a big container that will hold all of the necessary Azure resources to support what you create via the portal or through PowerShell or something. What do I mean by that? Well, for instance, if you create a virtual machine, that virtual machine is gonna to have to have disk storage. It's gonna use some sort of blob storage. It's gonna have VNet. It's going to have network cards. It's gonna have securities. It's gonna have the actual VM itself, all these different pieces. And that whole collection is going to be stored under a resource group. Now, you might think you can just go and delete the VM, but it doesn't work to do that because the other pieces will still be around. So the best way to be able to delete it is to delete the resource group. For that reason, I always take whatever I'm creating at a high level resource. I use the portal typically. I always create its own resource group. And so I know what's in there. Uh, I, I prefix with RG underscore, so I know that's a resource group and it's easy to find all my resource groups. The other thing I will do is then type in the name of what the asset's going to be. So here I'm going to say, I'm going to do this for YouTube. So it's going to be AdventureWorks YouTube. Hopefully that's unique. If it's not unique, it's going to give me a problem with it. It's going to say it's an error. That worked okay. Uh, now I have to give it a database name. And the database name, I'm going to let, I'll use AW. It likes that, so that's fine. So far, it's not giving me an error. Now, I, I could use an existing server, but I'm not going to. I'm going to create a brand new server. The server is like a database instance. If you've ever used like SQL Server Oracle, SQL Server has this idea of like an instance, but you can create any number of databases under the instance. So here I'm going to create a brand new one. And the server name I'm going to give it is, um, I'll go with the resource as I promised. So I've got AW YouTube. So AW YouTube. Hopefully this is unique. It is. So it's not giving me an error. Now the other thing you have to do is give it credentials. So there's a primary admin account. If you've used SQL Server, you know there's like a sysadmin account that you have to install. Any database has to have some way you can initially log in. And that's usually the God account that can do everything, right? So I'm going to create one here. I'm going to stick with something simple. So I'll say AW YouTube. Maybe type correctly, YouTube user. So that's my riveting user name. And then I have to give a password to go with this. So here I'm going to say, hopefully I can remember to type the same twice. Okay, so I did it correctly twice. Now the other thing is you notice it has this location region. You can drop that down and pick different regions. Whatever region you create in, it should be obviously if you're in, like I'm in the Boston area, so East US is the East Coast, that's a good region. I wouldn't want to be using the West Coast, and I certainly want to, wouldn't want to be using an international or different country's uh, region. Now, East US has East US 1 and 2. 
Now I'm going to be using this from Databricks, which is in East US where I created my workspace. And I'm also going to create my database there. So everything's close together and I can make this demo ultimately work. So I've got my server all set to go. That looks good. AW YouTube is a server name. I've got my login, AW YouTube user. I hope I can remember that. And then my password, that's good to go. Um, and I leave in swipe, well, no, I better not, so I can show you later what that looks like. Uh, so we'll go, all right, here we go. Uh, okay. And that now filled that in. Scroll down, I've got, to, do I want to use the elastic pool? I don't, that's another thing I could use. And configuring it, that's a fairly large one. If I go to configure the database, if you're just experimenting, you're trying to learn, I recommend you go back and uh, looking for basic, go back to the most simple database you can get. And you notice here it gives you 10, 10 gigabytes here, DTUs. DTUs is a cloud way that Microsoft uses to sort of measure the overall capacity and, and what you can do. Notice it's giving me 250 gigabytes, but I can bring that down a little bit. But watch over here. I mean, this is, so here's the value proposition in Azure, one of the best ones. I can have this database and use it, and it's only going to cost me $15 Per month. I'm not even going to reduce this. I'm going to say, great, take it. That's that's really cheap. And you can look at other options, but I'm going to say apply that. So now I've got everything set. I'm going to go to, I can go to review and create. I don't think I need anything else here, but let me, let me go take that back. Uh, connectivity, public endpoint. I'm going to allow it to be accessed public. I'm going to delete this shortly after. So I'll let it, uh, but pick what you want for that for network connectivity. I'm going to say allow Azure services and resources to get to this because if you're using anything like automation or anything, you want to make sure that it's allowed access. Review all your security options. Security in Azure is its own topic and takes a lot to learn, so I'm not going to get into all those issues. I will add the current IP address just so if I want to connect from my client machine, for instance, maybe I have SQL Server Management Studio and I want to be able to connect to the database, that will allow that to happen, and that's good. Go to additional settings. Now, looking here, one of the things I want to do, and this is a really nice feature of Azure SQL DB, is I can get a sample set of tables, a sample uh, database, if you will, to be installed as a starting point, which is really good for learning. So I'm going to say yes, give me sample. Notice it says Adventurous LT. I'm not sure what the LT stands for, but my guess is light, because you only get a few tables, which are part of the training database called AdventureWork. Works. I'm going to take that. Eventually, we're supposed to be this sporting goods supply place that sells bikes and stuff like that. I'm going to take that. The collation is already set for me, so that's fine. Uh, enable advanced data security. It has a free trial. I'm going to say not now. This is just for demo purposes. Go back. And you can create tags. Tags are good on any resources in Azure. Tags give you extra information. For instance, I might want to put things like cost center. I may want to say this is production, this is dev, this is test. Things that help me manage the resource through automation, like Azure Automation using PowerShell and things, you can actually filter on tags. So you might say any dev, any dev machines that are running on a Friday night, you could cycle through those VMs using tags, filter for them, and then say turn them off. So you're not paying for them on a weekend. That's what tags are for. I'm not going to use them here, but just so you know what they are, it's pretty handy. And finally, I'm at the review and create. And here we are. Looks good. I think I have everything I need. I hope I, I got to remember the name, but you can always search for it if you need to. So we're good to go, and I'm going to say create. Now what you'll notice is in the upper right-hand corner, you can see this little bell, and it starts generating messages saying, your deployment's underway, very riveting. It takes usually about five or six minutes before your asset's created. Okay, so you can see it popped up, go to resource. If you catch that, I missed it, but it says go to resource. And you can do that here, but you also have the option of pinning it. So what I'm going to do here is click go to resource. And once I'm in the resource, the first thing you get is the overview uh, pane, which a blade, which gives you all of the different um, information about your Azure SQL database group, uh, subscription, etc. And you have Anything in, in when you create resources, you get all these different areas you can look at. So you can configure your database here, and you get a bunch of things there. A lot of different options. You can change things, etc. And a lot of ways also. A lot of information available also on how to connect to other things. There's also a new thing in Preview, which is pretty handy, called the Query Editor. So you can go in there and go in here. And I can do a query, and I'd have to log in if I want to use that. I'm probably going a little more than I need to here, but... 
hope I got the password right. And so now what I can do is look at tables. Very simplified version of something like SQL Server Management Studio or Azure Data Studio. Uh, but I can do things like drag. I don't think I can do that. Let's see. I can go here and say select top 1,000 rows and it will generate the query for me. And running it. So you can do all these kind of things. It's pretty basic at this point, but it is handy to have this just so you can check things out. And you can see that we have some initial tables and things are ready to try our stuff out with. Now I did want to mention when I'm here, if I should be able to go here. Okay. When I'm on the overview blade, I can click on the push button and that will attach it to my dashboard. So I'll do that. And if I go to my dashboard, you can see somewhere in here it should have attached it. So where did it put it? Uh, you can see it at IEW SQL database down here. So put it kind of out of the way, but that way, whenever I want to find things, I can just go to my dashboard and quickly find things. Not a lot more to say about that. I want to use this though as a building block. So the next video I'm going to do is show you how to create an Azure Key Vault, which is really important because as you noticed, I had to create a user account that can get in a user ID to log into this database with superpowers. And I'm also going to have the user ID, um, excuse me, user ID and password. So I need to make sure I have a way to securely store that and retrieve it. And I'm going to show you more about that in the next video. So thanks for watching. Subscribe, share, stick around for the next video. Thank you.